Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Brooklady 18 is something that I have been looking forward to reviewing for quite a while. Now there's a couple things going on, but Brooklady 18, when I found out that this even existed or was going to exist, it's one of very few whiskeys I can think of where I've really anticipated its release. Now I did end up getting this back at the end of February and it's, you know, maybe the middle of April at this point. So why did it take me so long? Well, in a large part, it had to do with the fact that I was doing Irish Whiskey Month and that took the whole month of March, which awesome, but it did delay the release of this. But also there was something else that kept me from releasing this and I hate to even say it, I was waiting for myself to like it. And for me, I, I feel like I am definitely in the minority because I've talked to many other whiskey people. We have the Discord where I talk about whiskey all the time, um, link below, whatever. But I talked in there quite a bit and I've seen some other whiskey tubers and they reviewed it and they all seem to love it from the second it hit their lips. And I love Scotch and I love Brooklady. Like everything they do, I feel like is perfect. So when I first tried the Brooklady 18 and it wasn't just like amazing to me, I worried. And I started thinking, I was like, maybe this needs to open up. So I'll give it a little bit of time. And I started having it probably like every three or four nights up until the time of doing this actual uh, review, which, you know, of course, very difficult work. <laughs> but it's funny the things you choose to take seriously, right? But in this case, I just kind of kept having it and having it and having it until I, I guess I learned to like it. And for me, that didn't feel good enough. But I am happy to say that ultimately I did end up liking it and I do want to tell you guys about it. But I also don't want to gloss over the fact that just Brooklady 18, right? <laughs> like, I'm so excited. It's uh, was originally distilled in 2004, and this is going to be their next, like, a full-time release. They will always have the 18 just stocked and ready to go. I'm sure that it will be not super available, but it should be a mainline expression, and it should be around. Um, something worth mentioning as well is look at this clamshell, right? That's what I would call this, you know, back in video game time, like we would call these things clamshells as well. So I'm calling it a clamshell. This is, uh, for those that can't touch it, you know, through the screen, this is cardboard or something similar to it. It's like a paper stock kind of thing. And it's embossed with a whole bunch of words and everything. I'll get a close up here. It's embossed with a whole bunch of stuff. So you can read this and there's no ink. There's no printing. It's just pushed into the cardstock. And even the little latch here is, it works off of like a friction thing. So not only is this really cool, but it's also really well de designed. You don't have to take it off in order to pour yourself whiskey, which is really nice. But if you choose to, something that you're gonna notice, and I'm, I'm spending a little bit of time on this because I do think it's worth it. Um, the bottle itself is 60% less glass than what they typically use with the expectation that this little paper clamshell is going to keep it safe until it gets to your house. And if you choose to leave it on, which I would suggest doing, it's going to help you to block out the, the light that would potentially ruin your whiskey over a long period of time, but still. Um, so 60% less glass, which is a big deal, less waste. And the whole thing is made using renewable energy. Uh, so I have to commend Brooklady on that just... Overall, their whole distillery works off of trying to be more green. And I think it's hard to argue that producing less waste and making, you know, less use of power, whatnot, is, that is a good thing. And I, I can't imagine anybody arguing that point. But you're here to talk about the whiskey. Um, so let's talk about the whiskey. Brooklady 18 is 50% ABV. It's made from Isla Barley, which you all know I enjoy. I've done my video. You can check it out up there where I did like a across the board thing of the Isla Barley is very, very good. And I've got them up there as well. Love Isla Barley. Then you have organic grain and then you have some varietals from the Scottish mainland that are finding its way in here as well. All of the bottles from Brooklady have a barcode on it. And if you scan that barcode, it will take you to their website and show you everything about what's in this bottle. And I love that. I'm gonna just go out on a limb. Like it's a little over the top as far as I don't feel like every distillery needs to do it. But I also love that Brooklady does it and it makes my job a lot easier and lets me nerd out even more than I usually do. So good for you guys. <laughs> There's a reason I love Brooklady. All right. It ends up spending most of its time in X bourbon barrels, both refired and first fill. And it like spends most of its time there, but then it also at the very end, it marries together with some Brooklady that has spent time in X port and X Sauternes casks. So all of that's coming together to make this whiskey. 
All right, so with that 50% ABV, it's gonna be carrying a lot of flavor in both the nose and the flavor uh, taste, I guess. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a nose and a taste. So some of the main things you're gonna be getting here, this is actually really interesting because you're absolutely getting some of that American oak and you're getting things like vanilla and kind of that creaminess that sometimes you get on a bourbon. But that's mostly for me where the oak from the American barrel stops and you're starting to really get a lot of the influence from the sauternes in the port. And by this, I mean peach. You're also getting um, something that you don't get very often. And, and I had to actually, it's kind of like interesting timing because we just happen to have some lavender upstairs. And sometimes I worry that like I'm kind of contaminating my brain here, but I swear that this smells a little bit like lavender. So that's interesting. So I'd say peaches, honey for sure, lavender, um, and then you've got some of those like ex-bourbon flavors like the cream and um, vanilla, maybe like, I wanna say that there's more fruit in here than just those peaches. And typically if I'm smelling peaches, I may also be smelling apricot. So I'm gonna put both of those on the list uh, and I'm, I'm a little unsure if I'm smelling both or which one. So I'll put them both there in case you are smelling along with me and you're kind of fishing for something to smell. Let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Okay, the flavor here is really good, um, but, it, well, we'll get into that in the, in the overall. The things I'm actually tasting here, honey, for sure. Um, a very dry kind of tannic uh, flavor that you would get from oak. So let's say toasted oak without any smoke. Um, toasted oak with no smoke. Uh, also butterscotch, a little heavier on some of the bourbon notes than I would expect given the fruits that were on the nose. But the flavors I'm getting here are very different as far, let me rephrase that. I am also tasting fruits, but they are different than what I smelled. In the smell, it was peaches, apricots, um, that's kind of it. On the flavor, it's more citrusy, like an orange or a lemon. And that's a little interesting. But also maybe, maybe a little pineapple, which is interesting as well. I love tropical fruits and I've got to think that must be the port coming through. Uh, I would say, I would say pineapple actually, uh, mostly on the finish. Like as I'm talking now, it's coming out more and it's leaving me with a finish of pineapple. Hmm. The orange is definitely showing as well. Um, there's maybe a little bit of a nuttiness there as uh, kind of alongside the toasted oak. Uh, not hazelnut, maybe like a toasted walnut kind of thing. Um, not peanut, not, not uh, maybe macadamia. Uh, it's interesting. I feel like I, I feel like I need to, to taste more of those things. <laughs> I don't want to give you guys the sound bite. <laughs> All right, I really like this. Uh, I've learned to like this and it did not come across that way initially. So let's go into the overall. Let's start off with the price because it was something I neglected to mention earlier, uh, actually on purpose. This cost me $176 plus shipping. That's a lot of money. Let's just call it $200. That's a ton of money uh, for an 18 year old scotch, or is it? Um, when I look around, and uh, this was a bit of a shock to me, when I looked at the market and what you would get for an 18 year old whiskey, a lot of them are approaching that price, which is insane to me. I understand that supplies might be running low and we had tariffs and everything for a little while. I get that the prices have gone up and I'm keeping that in mind, but $200 for an 18 year old scotch is absolutely insane. It's, it's reprehensible. Um, I, I hate that about it. but. Let's remove that. Um, price is different for everybody. So let's talk just about the flavor. This does not wow me for an 18 year old whiskey. When I drink this, uh, and you know, it is hard to separate the money because I, I have another point I wanna make. When I spend $200 on a whiskey, that should be something super memorable to me and something absolutely delicious. I do think this is very good. But if I were the kind of person that gave it out of 10 rating, I would give it like a six and a half to a seven out of 10. I don't think this is that memorable. And frankly, it's not something I'll be repurchasing. Um, Stock it is a much 
different thing to me than saying like, hey, you should really go out of your way to try this. So that's fair. I won't be buying a second one, so I definitely am not giving it stuck it. However, if you are the kind of person who loves Brooklady and you love everything that they do and you're like me, because frankly, no other re no reviewer online could have talked me out of buying this bottle. It's worth a buy. This is something that you should try. It will be around, so maybe wait. Maybe the price will level off a little bit. Um, but if this is just something that you're considering buying, I would say try to find it somewhere else. Try to find it at a bar. Um, go to a whiskey bar. Pay, I don't know, $25 for a uh, pour of this. It's still better than $180 or $200. Um, but as far as the flavor goes, it doesn't do anything spectacular, but it also doesn't do anything wrong. It is overall pretty good. Um, but that's really it. I suspect this is going to sit on my shelf for a while. It's not something I'm going to think about and be like, what do I, what do I actually want tonight? Brooklady 18? That's not going to come up. Frankly, I'd pour the Port Charlotte first. Um, I might even, I probably wouldn't pour the Classic Claudia over this, but it's, it's a tough sell for me. So I'm going to give it a very hard try it. And I think you should go out of your way to try it but I don't think this is worth the money. I think you should buy something else. Okay. Well, lay the, uh, lay the insults, lay the, the, the um, aggression down in the comments. That's totally fine. Um, this might be one that you disagree with me on, and I totally welcome your, your uh, critiques. So thank you guys very much. Next week, we're actually going to be doing the Talisker Storm. Uh, for once, I'm going to pre-record, so I actually know what I'm releasing next week. So the Talisker Storm will be coming out, and I have a lot of good things to say about that whiskey. So I'll see you all next week on the Whiskey Dictionary. Cheers.